The next biogeochemical cycle we'll talk about is the nitrogen cycle. If we think about nitrogen in general, nitrogen is really important to living organisms. Um, nitrogen is a key component of amino acids, which are um, linked together to form proteins that make up living things. Uh, nucleic acids, like DNA and RNA, contain nitrogen as well. Um, nitrogen is also an important component in fertilizers. And often, in, um, especially in terrestrial ecosystems, nitrogen is a limiting nutrient. That the amount of nitrogen in the soil is often limited, and that limits the growth of producers. The main pools of nitrogen that we find in the biosphere are in the atmosphere, which is actually the largest component of nitrogen. But the form of nitrogen we find in the Earth's atmosphere is N2. Two nitrogen atoms bonded together. They are bonded very tightly, and most organisms are, cannot break those bonds. And so even though nitrogen makes up 78% of the Earth's atmosphere, most organisms cannot access it. It's locked there. We'll talk about the organisms that can access it in a moment. There's nitrogen in the soil in various forms. Right? There's ammonia and ammonium, NH3, NH4. There's nitrite, NO2, and nitrate, NO3. And various processes within the soil can transform the nitrogen through those different compounds, those different combinations. The oceans contain nitrogen in the form of NH4. And also, there is nitrogen locked up in the tissue of living organisms. <clears throat> the flows of nitrogen within the biosphere. Uh, one key flow that you must know about is nitrogen fixation. So nitrogen fixation is the process when some organisms such as bacteria, some uh, bacteria that live in the soil, especially in nodules in the roots of certain plants. We call them legumes. Uh, and cyanobacteria in the oceans can take that nitrogen that's unusable by most species that's in the atmosphere, N2, and transform it into a more usable um, form of nitrogen, NH3, okay, ammonia. And so those organisms are extremely important in the biosphere because they can take that atmospheric N2 and transform it into a, a form that many other species can then use. This is one of the reasons we planted um, mung beans in our eco columns because they are a legume they can help to fix nitrogen because they have with them in their roots bacteria, typically, which help absorb nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into um, ammonia that can then make its way through the soil um, nitrogen cycle. There are also um, other abiotic ways that the nitrogen in the atmosphere can be fixed or transformed. Lightning and fires uh, can fix some of that nitrogen. Um, also, humans have realized in the last 70 years or so how to extract nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into fertilizers. Okay? That process is extremely energy intensive, but it is how we produce nitrogen for fertilizers. <clears throat> how do organisms like um, plants and deer and humans get their nitrogen through a process we call assimilation. That's absorbing the nitrogen in some way. Producers like plants can absorb nitrate and ammonium through their roots. That's how they get it. Consumers get nitrogen by consuming other organs, by consuming plants and other animals. That's how consumers get their nitrogen. It's also called assimilation. There's a few other processes. Uh, ammonification is decomposers in the soil that can return 
um, nitrogen into the form of NH4 ammonium, organic material, like dead roots and leaves and animals, uh, can be transformed into ammonium through the action of decomposers. The process called nitrification takes ammonium, NH4, and transforms it into nitrate, NO3. NO3 is a form that is more uh, accessible to most plants, the preferred form of nitrogen. It's called nitrification. And then denitrification is the opposite, transforming, um, not quite the opposite, transforming that usable nitrate into N2, uh, the, the form that's much less usable. So we can look at all of this here in the model. Um, this shows us again, the boxes represent, and the circles represent um, pools of nitrogen. We have the atmospheric nitrogen, nitrogen in plants, and, decom and then in the soil on the bottom. We can see all the processes I just talked about. Nitrogen fixation, taking atmospheric nitrogen, okay, from in bacteria can then um, transform that nitrogen into forms that are more usable to the plants. Here we have ammoniification. Okay, again, when bacteria um, take nitrogen and can transform it into um, ammonium, which can then go through the process of nitrification, which transforms it into nitrites and nitrates. That's done also by bacteria. Plants absorb that nitrate through the process of assimilation. Animals get nitrogen by assimilating, by eating those plants. We also know decomposers can take the nitrogen in this organic material, decompose it, and then transform it back into ammonium. And finally, these denitrifying bacteria can take the nitrates and transform them into N2 atmospheric nitrogen. And we have lightning, which is a natural source of another natural source of nitrogen fixation. And because nitrogen is a limiting nutrient in many ecosystems, if we add excess nitrogen to an ecosystem, especially aquatic ecosystems, it can result in uh, some negative impacts. We'll talk much in much more detail when we get to aquatic pollution, but the release of nitrogen, or we'll talk next about phosphorus, into aquatic ecosystems acts as a fertilizer for the growth of algae. And that can form what we call algae blooms, the rapid growth of algae in an ecosystem. But then when that algae eventually dies, sinks, and decomposes, the decomposition uses up oxygen and creates these zones, dead zones, where there's very little oxygen and organisms can't survive. And if we look, there are large dead zones, for example, in the Gulf of Mexico, where the Mississippi River uh, enters the Gulf. If we think about where that nitrogen comes from, much of it is runoff from farms, fertilizer used on farms. Some comes settling out of the atmosphere. Some comes from um, cow manure, from CAFOs, and other areas as well. So that nitrogen can have a negative impact on ecosystems.